Great. Awesome. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so um, if you didn't get a chance to speed run through that description, um, my name is Kai Oliver. I'm a senior game designer, uh, pronouns he, him, and I'm going to talk a little bit about bumps in the road, how to dodge a disaster when taking part in game jams. So hopefully, has, uh, just to show hands real quick, how many of you have taken part in a game jam before? Hey, you're all experts then. What am I giving a talk about? Well, maybe you'll find this useful because you may have experienced some parts of those games jams which you thought maybe could have gone a bit better. And that's kind of what this talk is going to try and summarize. Uh, oh, I'll go to the next one. So, I'm going to do it like this. I can tap. Okay, so I'm, I'm me. You probably don't need to know more than that. Um, I come from the UK, like you said, immigrated. I'm also dreaming of starting up a video game uh, workers' cooperative. So if you want to talk to me about that later, or you want to know more about workers' co-ops, please come and see me. Uh, so I also run an interactive theatre game company called Bagel and Balloon with my wife. If you want to know more about that, please come and speak to me. Now, because I work in the theatre, uh, land acknowledgements are a really big, important part. This is something I don't want to skip over. Uh, we are located in Mi'kma'ki, we're in Kujipukchuk, and uh, this is the unceded and ancestral homeland of the Mi'kmaq people. Treaties of Peace and Friendship uh, were created in order to manage the relationships <coughs> and, uh, you know, really these recognized Mi'kmaq titles and stewardships and established rules for what was going to be an ongoing relationship are core to the conversations that go on now with uh, the people who've been here before, and settlers. So I just wanted to make sure that was said. So, okay, you know what a game jam is, but what isn't it? So I've sort of said things like, it's not when your SNES cartridge gets stuck. It's not a delectable conserve. It's not a way to get other people to make a game for you. So remember this. It's kind of important not to just sit back and let the rest of your team do all the work. It's also not a guaranteed way to get fame and fortune. Um, for me, game jams really are mostly about the fun. And um, I don't have time to explain. Just get in the game jam. Uh, really, I, I describe game jams at their heart as making a game in less time than it takes to make a game. <laughs> it's just setting aside that time to do that. Okay, and that could be 24 hours, it could be a month. Uh, I went on Itch recently and saw game jams going on for 75 years. <laughs> if you want to join that, please do. Uh, I won't. So, but here's the main opportunity for a game jam. So, it's a limited set, uh, time set aside for you to present a playable prototype, and that is going to force you to get creative, it's going to force you to take risks, you're going to push your skills, and you're going to learn some new stuff. So it's a really great thing for anyone uh, in this room who hasn't tried it already to give it a shot. So these are a few of the jams that I've taken part in over the years. Um, some of them are obscure and like region specific. You know, the UK student game jam is from the UK. Um, I did that with uh, when I was graduating from my master's in game design and development. Um, oh, I'm getting Discord notifications. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the Jolly Boat Game Jam, that one was a friend who set up a musical comedy pirate event. I don't know how best to describe it, but they were doing tabletop role-playing games. Uh, so I decided to solo enter that by myself. Ludum Dare and Global Game Jam, much more global, much more something you've probably heard of already. Uh, entered those with complete strangers and also with friends. Uh, some of them have been really successful, some of them didn't submit. So it's natural to go through these big, almost they feel like life-changing moments sometimes, getting together with a group of people and making something. Uh, but that doesn't translate always into a finished thing. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So the last two ones that I've been involved in very recently have been the Just Play Jam and the MetaQuest Presence Platform Hackathon. So the first one, uh, I was very fortunate to submit a game uh, uh, with, uh, again, two complete strangers that I met on Discord. And uh, in three weeks, was able to uh, submit something that won an award for artistic achievement. I got flown to South by Southwest in Texas to take part in the celebrations for that jam. So that was really exciting. And it just goes to show that sometimes jams can have other benefits. Um, the hackathon. Uh, I actually went with uh, a couple of folks here. So Daniel and Sade, where's Sade? 
somewhere over there, uh, and Jordan, uh, who's not here today. Um, and yeah, we had a really great time with this. Uh, it's technically a hackathon, so the goal is a little bit different. I find that it's more about innovation and using a technology or going really deep into uh, you know, expressing some value for the people who are running the hackathon. Game jams are a bit more about the fun, about the social, about the learning, but there's really a lot of crossover between the two. So keep a listen out for hackathons as well as jams, and I'm sure you'll have similar experiences. So where can you find a jam? So super quick, you can go to itch.io. It's the best place. There's a giant calendar full of game jams that you can go through. Um, it, the list keeps growing every year. And this is just, I think, what, seven or 10 days, maybe 12 days. And there's all these jams going on right now. Um, here is an example of the m upcoming ones. And I would recommend, if you haven't heard of Kenny's um, game assets, the Kenny uh, Game Jam 2024 is a really great starter game jam. It's going to be something that you can really quickly get free assets to work with and build exciting, uh, maybe like super simple, but like really exciting, good looking uh, experiences. Um, and I find just having a big bunch of assets to work with is ex exceptionally useful. Uh, yeah, but let's get real. The road to success is not always that easy. And uh, you might find yourself with some pretty tough feelings and emotions in these experiences because you're slammed together with such a short amount of time to really work together. And it really takes a lot of heart and soul to, to, to work on some of these things usually. Um, everyone's really excited. Everybody's got a lot of um, you know, get up and go and then you all smash together and realize, wow, that didn't work. <laughs> So how can we kind of talk about this? Um, the way I've looked at it is, you know, there's many different ways to categorize the different things that can happen in a game jam that don't go so well. Um, but these are some of the things that I've heard said or have personally experienced. So uh, the thing we submitted, in, you know, wasn't super playable. It, it didn't feel good to play. It didn't really even fit the theme. By the end, it didn't kind of match what we were trying to go for. Oh no, it didn't get submitted. That, definitely has happened to me more than once, and it sucks. It really does. Um, but you do learn. Uh, oh, is it going to let me click? click? There we go. Uh, so time is really focused on like things like, oh, spent too, too long in certain areas. Or we rushed through certain stages where we could have really just spent a bit more time together figuring this out. Uh, maybe we ran out of time to implement X feature. I'm going to highlight tutorials as one that uh, we wanted to do in our jam, and it just didn't get in in time. And you know, a tutorial, or at least some way in a game jam for a player to, once they get your game, understand what they're supposed to do with this crazy mess you made. Probably good idea to put something in to describe what to do. Uh, and then, yes, submitting at the last minute, oh, that's really tough as well. Like, if you submit your game at the last minute, you've, uh, you've kind of removed a lot of the breathing space that comes from just sitting back and testing and playing it. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a dangerous place to be when you're in a game jam. Sorry, am I going too fast? <laughs> so the team, okay, in your team, there's lots of things that can, can happen, but sometimes you just personally don't feel prepared. Maybe you haven't got the right tools in your toolbox, Maybe you didn't know what other people were using. And you come together and, whoa, OK, now we need to work this all out. We've had weeks before the jam to figure this out, right? Um, you might feel exhausted afterwards. I think in the last jam, slept on one day for half an hour. That was a bad idea. Um, and I'm going to recommend no one ever do that, because I might as well have just stayed up. Um, but no, seriously, it's something that you want to encouraging yourself to note when you're getting tired, note when you need a break. It's super important. And you know, stay, stay hydrated, stay well fed, all that kind of stuff. Um, your team can also you know, sometimes make you feel like you're not very aligned or listened to. And again, it's that smashing together of personalities. How do we deal with uh, you know, ego? Or how do we deal with uh, trusting each other? Um, those are really big questions to ask. And I recommend you do it beforehand. Um, commitments were dropped is that kind of thing of like, oh, I really wish you had done that. 
and uh, you said you would and you didn't. So why, why did that happen? And that's just generally tough to deal with. And it's also, I think you have to give sometimes people a bit of slack because it is such a short amount of time. And you have to remember, it is mostly for fun. So assessing whether a commitment was dropped as a big issue is something to do in the moment, but also afterwards, uh, maybe after the jam. I'll let this sink in a bit. <laughs> okay, so um, all of these things are actually good things to experience in the confines of an experimental game competition type experience. Because really, you are meant to be learning from this. Like, if you've experienced any of those things, actually, hands up if anyone experienced any of those things. Like, okay, cool, that's mostly the, the, the people. Now, funnily enough, that's probably people who were doing it in game jams. What about outside of game jams? Have you experienced any of those things? More hands, okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So life is good. It's good to experience those things. However, it can be better, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So, okay, this might be obvious, and it might go against this kind of mentality of like, we've got to get to the end of the deadline, but actually it's important to be kind and considerate too, because <laughs> if you're not, people are going to feel like crap afterwards. So this is something that really I just want everyone to think about when they go into jams. You're working with other humans. They're there to support you. You're there to support <coughs> them. Now. There are times where being kind and considerate doesn't actually cut the mustard. And you need to have a bit more tools to deal with some of the things that happen. So this is my audience uh, interaction section, beyond just putting up hands and going, oh, I did this thing. I want you to put up hands and vote. So which one will Kai discuss next? Will it be scope creep? Or, well, oh, hang on, hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa. I guess I've got to announce them first. Scope creep. Or preparation, or bad preparation. Yeah. So which one would you like to, I'll, I'll say the first one and then the second one. So, hands up for scope creep. Okay, okay. And then what about bad preparation? You know what, it's scope creep this time. Okay, okay, cool. Um, this means I don't have to read two slides, that's great. So, scope creep. What are the causes of scope creep? I would just ask you all, but I'm gonna throw some out because we have some time uh, restrictions. Eager beavers. We're in Canada, we're sometimes eager beavers. We just want to get at that and just put all our ideas out in one place. You know, I'm, uh, I'm guilty of this personally, and I think it's really important to note when a lot of ideas are being thrown around and no one's taking responsibility for saying, okay, let's write that down and move on, or let's write that down and go with it, right? You know, we need to kind of have some, some reference point here. To poor time estimates can mean uh, the scope of your experience is actually just way bigger than you realize because you don't accurately position <coughs> your team members in the tasks that they're doing and how long those tasks will take. So it's super important to think about this when you go in. Can I be accurate with my estimations? But also, can I put a bit of contingency in so that I don't end up working on this longer than I should and then the scope keeps getting bigger and bigger? Um, a lack of a reference point, I kind of hinted at this with Eager Beavers, if you don't have a GDD, a mood board, something that you can all look at and go, that's what we signed up to, then new features are just going to spring up like Mario mushrooms, like pretty quickly. There's going to be um, a lot of confusion around that. And too many decision makers, too many cooks spoil the broth. Really important to remember that you can delegate decisions to people uh, at the end of an ideas session, and that is totally fine. But make sure everyone agrees about the responsibility that is going to be taken on. So some effects are half-implemented features, uh, features getting pushed out, no time for polish. Oh, <coughs> I want to make this game look good when I give it to people. Um, it's not important because it's a jam for it to look perfect, but a little bit of polish can make all the difference. Analysis paralysis, I think, could apply to a lot of these things, but really scope creep, I find that you've got this wide open field in front of you and you don't know which feature to go with, so you just do all of them. I wouldn't say, uh, yeah, try, try making sure you can throw out some ideas to leave room for others to grow. So the main sort of 
feedback I'd give here is if you want to avoid scope creep, just keep it super simple. Um, <coughs> sweetheart, not stupid. Uh, you know, plan, plan to finish it at the halfway mark. Now, this is a bit revolutionary. Instead of using those 72 hours, why not use, I don't know, 32, 30, something like that? Make the game and then the rest is polished. What could you make in that first half? you might discover that you actually make something not only better for an end user to play, but something that's way more impressive for like showcasing afterwards, maybe putting on your social media, et cetera, et cetera. Um, make a GDD and mood board on day one. Just choose something, nail it down. You can work out the specifics later, but so long as you're saying this is the general size and shape of what we're making, you are gonna be way ahead of most people who enter game jams. And keep ideation um, <coughs> kind of focused. Like, again, it's like a day one thing. Um, you can come back and talk about ideas and try and put them into different shapes. But, but really, you know, if you can get all the ideation done early on, potentially even before the jam, get a little bit of work done beforehand, you're actually going to find yourself way more uh, adapted to, to the, the, the entry into the jam and then the subsequent work. So um, super quickly, I worked on a solo game jam by myself. Um, uh, sorry, I should say it wasn't a solo jam. It was, it was a pair jam that I initiated with a friend. And we decided to jump in together just to work on a weekend and do a little mini game jam for ourselves. You can totally do this. Perfectly fine. It's actually quite fun. And I found that um, we wanted to make a real-time, cozy strategy game. What that ends up becoming is, oh, that's quite big. But then we added, let's use Godot when we've never used it before. <laughs> oh, that's nice, isn't it? Like, let's use some tools we've never used before to try and build a game in, I think we had 24 hours. So you know what we did instead? Like, we tried to adapt, and we went, OK, let's just do the GDD. And actually, a GDD game jam is kind of fun, because you don't have any of the pressure of making it, but you do have all the joy of like, <coughs> thinking about it and try and scoping things out. And we just said, OK, if we were to make this game, we'll do it in, let's say, 72 hours next time, and we've got the GDD ready to go. So it's a way to think about things if you're not uh, as connected to the jam. I'm going to skip this one. And I think, do I have time for one more vote? Do I have time for one more vote? All right, one more, real quick. I'll zoom through this one. So hands up for communication, bad communication. Okay, what about expectations, misaligned expectations? Oh, it's close, but I'm going to go with expectations. Um, so we'll skip that one. Okay, so misaligned expectations. So really, a lot of this comes down to, you know, you have something that you need or want or desire, and it's really like coming up against other people's wants and desires. But you haven't found a way to uh, try and figure it out, try to work together to find compromises. So, so causes of this can be like failing to build in time just to discuss expectations. Like for me, an expectation is really important because it covers stuff like how safe I feel talking about certain topics, what tools I feel comfortable learning, what tools I may have ethical reasons not to use. I know we have a talk about AI later, which might be interesting to think about. Um, there's, there's all sorts of things there that are about people working together. This is not like the expectations of the game and how the game will be, although that's definitely linked to your goals and it's really important, but super important to just build in some time. Um, misaligned expectations can really cause people to just get tunnel vision. They can just be like, okay, my expectation is I need to go do this. I'm not going to tell anyone else about it, and I'm just going to go work really hard on this one feature and everyone else had already decided they weren't going to make that feature. That can happen. And uh, tunnel vision is just something you it's hard to snap out of. It really requires good communication, which is also on the other slide. Not listening, again, that's kind of, you know, keep, keep your ear up if you can. Um, and there's this assumption that no response means yes. I don't know if anyone's experienced this, where you're like, I'm going to talk real, like, I'm going to have this really great idea, and no one says anything. And then everyone's like, are we doing it? I guess we are. OK. But maybe keep a track on that as well. Um, so effects, sudden schisms in team cohesion, work or other commitments um, fall off from your team members. 
you might feel judged, intimidated, invalidated, unheard. Uh, you, you just might have less breaks than you need because you didn't communicate or someone wasn't able to set the expectation. And then really, you know, avoiding it is about taking the time to discuss these things, boundaries, expectations, risks. Well, what do you consider a risk? Like, has anyone ever asked you that in a game jam or even in your team at work? Because it's really important to try and nail down early. Um, again, creating a design brief and discussing together, having one place that you can focus everything really helps. And then, you know, just being clear with your needs. Be flexible with your desires, but if you have needs, make sure they're expressed. So I went a bit over, apologies everyone, but this is kind of uh, my wrap up. There's a couple of resources that I've added. Upcoming jams, um, making a collective agreement I find really useful. Uh, RPG safety tools, so doing tabletop role playing, actually uh, there's a lot of tools built into that about how people tell stories together, and I find they're really good for managing people's boundaries and expectations. So take a look at that. And then I've also got a creative uh, design uh, brief that is a template. Uh, and also I'll share this with everyone if you need it. Um, I'm sure we can do that through GDA. Uh, and there's a game jam template coming soon, so hopefully that'll be in the folder that's linked on that QR code. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, that's the end of my chat.